The Venice Architecture Biennale is the most important event in the international architecture calendar. And the theme this year was, how will we live together? We chose to explore it by looking at immigration, hybridity and multiculturalism through three London buildings. The exhibition is called Three British Mosques and it's about the history of Muslim architecture in Britain and we're representing that history through reconstructions of three adapted buildings that have been converted into mosques in London. Three mosques are the Harrow Mosque, which is in northwest London, Brick Lane Mosque, which is in East London, and Old Kent Road Mosque, which is in South London. And we chose those three mosques because they're each representative of different types of adaptation of buildings into mosques. <laughs> Harrow Mosque is a pair of semi-detached houses and the house was really the earliest type of mosque that was made uh, in this country because it was the easiest kind of building to obtain by new migrant communities. So the house is re a real kind of archetypal uh, sort of mosque building, so that's why we used Harrow. We put some plastic sheets and metal sheets and we make like room, big room for Friday prayer. Also uh, Saturday, Sunday, people using for boxing. Brick Lane Mosque was built as a Huguenot chapel in 1743. It was then used as a Methodist chapel about 80 or 90 years later. And then again, about 80 years later, it was used by the Jewish community as a synagogue. And then in 1976, it was purchased by the local Bangladeshi Muslim community and became a large mosque in, in the East End. So Brick Lane it represents this reuse of a single religious building by different religious communities. <laughs> The Old Kent Road Mosque is in southeast London and it's a mosque which has been created by the Nigerian Muslim community and it was a former pub, a Victorian pub, so it kind of really represents that kind of hybridisation of different cultures in one building. When immigrant communities came to this country and started up mosques, it was often in existing buildings. They improvised their mosque, we called it the ad hoc mosque in places like cinemas, pubs, libraries, former churches. They were buying their own buildings, gathering money from amongst themselves, and incrementally adapting those to create places of worship. So the history of the mosque in Britain is really responsive to the needs of the community as it's grown. These ad hoc structures are being demolished as successful communities fundraise to build purpose-built mosques in their place. So we wanted our Venice exhibition to document and record the improvised mosque before it's lost forever. We've chosen to recreate various sections of the various case study mosques that we're looking at. So we've reconstructed the mehrab and the mimba from each mosque uh, and then we've taken elements of interest from each building. So for example with the Harrow Mosque which was a pair of semi-detached houses uh, we reconstructed the front doorway uh, which is a very uh, kind of domestic uh, suburban architectural type but it has all the signage that denotes that it's a, a place of worship and denotes that it's a mosque. With Brick Lane we reconstructed a dormer window, which is in the attic space. It's used for Islamic education for children. And each pane of the window has been used to put in a letter of the Arabic alphabet. So the historic fabric becomes reused as a kind of teaching facility for the current users of the building. And we also reconstructed a sundial on the pediment of Brick Lane Mosque. And that was built in 1743 by the Huguenots. And the sundial has a Latin phrase underneath, which says umbra sumus, which means we are our shadows. It connects the idea of mortality and the idea of belief across all the different communities that have used that building. With the Old Kent Road Mosque we reconstructed the wall of the pub and the existing decorative cornices have been painted by the mosque. So that wall really has the paraphernalia that you'd find within the mosque for daily use. So it's a real kind of visual feast actually. Many of the younger people in the community have been coming there since they were children right through to when they're adults. And there's a sort of connection and an emotional bond between people and the building that you don't necessarily see in public buildings. I've been coming here for 20 plus years every week. We are the pillar of the building. Without the pillar, the, the home will not be solid. It is like 
walking in and seeing your extended family. We have people of different culture that come in here and they come and pray and they are the community. Reclaim Mosque is, uh, again, a different story, different type of community, and they recognised the need for a, a large building because the community they anticipated was, uh, was going to grow. Having acquired the building, it was in a poor condition. The radiators wasn't always working, so the evening madrasa in the winter time, we would be double jacket jacketing up. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a bit of a dingy place, uh, but nevertheless, it was, it was safe space. And we felt a, 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 you know, a sense of comradeship. Within the exhibition there are video screens and on those screens we have footage of people who use the mosque, so congregants and community members who are talking about how they use the mosque and the significance of the building to them. And we also have footage of the assembly film that Julie Marsh has made within each of these spaces. Julie Marsh is a filmmaker working with the communities and visually representing and recording their practices of worship. <laughs> One of the things that we made for the exhibition was a 3D scan of each of the buildings and that was a digital three-dimensional record of each space at a particular moment in its history. The digital scan is then looked at alongside the one-to-one -one replicas, so the two work alongside each other. The Architecture Biennale is a place for the v to experiment, to explore new ways of representing architecture and new avenues of collecting. And some of the things we've exhibited will return to South Kensington and go on display in our architecture galleries. For me, the significance of the Victoria and Albert Museum is the way in which the museum tells particular stories through designed objects. So we're celebrating contemporary Muslim architectural history and the way in which our different communities live together in one city. You know, we hope that this pavilion will increase understanding and encourage people to appreciate the Muslim experience and also the Muslim contribution to the architecture of Britain.